In this tutorial, I will explain how to define import and export templates. Import templates are used to import files in the CSV format created in other systems into a VRM. Export templates are used to export data in the CSV format for use by other systems. I will use the CRM sample application to demonstrate how to work with these templates. In this application, we have the custom object. This object has a number of attributes, such as the first name, last name, email address, gender, and so on. Let's say that we want to import customers from a CSV file created by some other package. We have a sample CSV file from this package, which for simplicity has just two records. The records have the following structure. The first column contains the name of the customer. The second column has date of birth. The third one has gender, M or F. And the third and fourth columns contain email address and postal address respectively. So how can we import this data into a VRM? How will a VRM know which column in the import file corresponds to which attribute in the custom object? By defining an import template, we can specify how a VRM should map the data in the CSV file into the attributes of the object. If we look at the structure of columns, we notice that some columns just map directly to the attributes of the custom object. For example, email address and postal address map directly to the corresponding attributes in the object. But other columns introduce some complications. The first column contains both first name and last name of the customer, whereas our custom object has first name and last name as separate attributes. So our mapping rules need to split the first column into first name and last name. The second column has date of birth, which seems to map directly to the date of birth attribute of the custom object. The problem is that the date format in the import file is different from the date format that a WHEREIAM expects for this attribute. In a WHEREIAM it is MM ddyyy with forward slashes and in the file the format uses dashes instead of forward slashes. The third column maps to the gender attribute of the custom object but the custom object expects the gender to be specified as male or female. Whereas in the import file it is M or F. I will show you how to handle these complications when defining an import template. So let's begin. First of all, we need to give users the ability to define and manage their import templates. By default, the CRM sample application does not allow this, so we need to enable this functionality. All we have to do is define a special menu command to the application menu. So I open the visual perspective for the administrator, go to the top menu and add a new command. The type of this command should be manage import and export templates. We will also need to add the ability to import CSV files, so I add another command of the import type.
That's all we have to do. Let me show you now how to define an import template. So I log into the application using the browser. Our menu now has the Manage Templates command. So I select it and the system displays a list of existing templates, which is empty of course because we don't have any. So I click Add Import and give the name to our new template. Then I select the object, which is Customer. And here I need to provide whether the import file has headers or not. Some import files have some header information that needs to be ignored when importing data. Our import file does not have headers, so I specify does not have headers here. Now I need to specify how many columns the file has. I know that there are five. Note that if I have a sample CSV file, I could get a where I am to read this information from the sample file. This is when there are many columns and it's too tedious to count them manually. In our case, though, it's quite simple. So I click Continue, and now I need to provide mapping rules, that is, describe how columns map to the attributes of the object. By default, a where I am assigns A, B, and C, and so on as column names. So in our mapping rules, we can refer to columns as A, B, and C, and so on. However, we can assign our own names to the columns, so that it is easier to remember what every column means. Let's do this. I select column names and formatting, then click Edit for A, and column name A is actually the name of the customer, so I specify a name. Column B is date of birth. And here we can immediately specify the format of the date in the file. Column C is gender. Column D is email address. And column E is postal address. Now I need to provide mapping rules for each of our columns. Let's start with the straightforward ones, email address and postal address, that map directly to the corresponding attributes of the object. So we click Edit next to Email, and then column Email maps to attribute email address. And then for the postal address, column address, maps to attribute address. And since we have already provided the format of the date of birth column in the import file, we can map the date of birth uh, column to the date of birth attribute of the custom object. So we click Edit and then select date of birth as the attribute that this column maps to. Let's now specify mapping for the name column. Well, to remind you, the name column in the import file has both first name and last name separated by space, whereas in the custom object we have first name and last name as separate attributes. So, we will map the first word of this column to the first name attribute, and then we will add a special mapping rule that will map the second word of this column to the last name attribute. So, let's start with the mapping for the name column. It will map to the column expression. And here I will select the words from left function. So, we're, to, we're taking the first word from left for the name column and we map it to the first name attribute. Now we add a rule that will map
the first word from right to the last name attribute. Customer last name equals the first word from right of the name column. Note that column expressions use their where I am rule syntax and you can refer to columns by using their names in closed and curly brackets. Now mapping of the gender attribute. The mapping rule is straightforward. It maps the gender column to the gender attribute. However, in the import file, we have values of the gender specified as M and F, whereas in the custom object, we expect them to be male or female. So we need to add a couple of validation rules that would convert M to male and F to female. Let's do that. So for male, we will have if gender equals M then customer gender equals male. I will copy this rule and I will add another one For female mapping. Our mapping rules are almost complete. The final rule that we have to add is the rule for the login name attribute. This attribute is mandatory in the configuration, so if we don't provide the value for this attribute, creation of a record may fail. So we will map login name to the name column. And our special rule will be customer login name equals the value of the name column. The last thing I want to do in our template is define log identifier attributes. For each imported record, a where I am will add a record in the import log specifying whether import was successful for this record or not. Adding identifier attributes help us identify the records in the log. So we will add first name and last name as the identifying attributes for the record. I will show it to you a little later and it will become clearer. We can now save the template and we have the template now in this list of templates. Before we can use the template though, we must activate it. So I click the activate button and our template becomes active. So now we can actually import the file using this template. Let's do this. So I select import and then Rather than specifying standard column mapping, I select the column mapping is determined by template radio button and then select our template. Then I select the file and click import. So the data has been imported successfully and I can see the log. The log says that both records have been imported successfully and you can see that the records are identified by the first and last names so it is immediately clear which records the log, the log is talking about. And if we look at the list of our customers we can see both Paula Clark and Sam Johnson imported from the import file.
Let's quickly go through some other features available for import and export templates. If we uh, open our template again, and go to Mapping Rules, we can see that here we can specify that an, that an attribute is part of a primary key. In this case, a VRAM will not create a new record, but rather try to find an existing record identified by the primary key and update it with the values from the data file. You can also specify a reference path to a referred object. In this case, a VRAM will create a referred object on the fly and associate it with the imported record. We have already co covered column names and formatting, validation and other rules, and log identifier. Export templates are quite similar to import templates. The difference is that instead of mapping column names to attributes, you map attributes to column names. Then you can specify mapping rules in very much the same way that we have specified them for import templates. So in this tutorial, we have covered the basics of the import and export templates. Feel free to explore other details of this powerful feature on your own.